Hello everybody, my name is JJ Menu and I'm an application engineer at Arrow Electronics. Today we will give an overview of the most common proximity sensors technologies that are all effect sensors, inductive sensors, capacitive sensors, infrared and time of light. All effect sensors are designed to detect magnets in the short range. The Lorentz force is the phenomenon responsible for the Hall effect. When electrons move along a direction and the magnetic field perpendicular to the current direction is applied, electrons undergo a force. Instead of going straight, flow of electrons is curved, creating a voltage that can be measured. And Hall effect sensor switch comes in three configurations. Unipolar, where it responds to north or south, but not to both. The omnipolar configuration responds to north and south poles. The bipolar configuration that is similar to a latch. Two fundamental parameters expressed in Gauss in data sheets are BOP, that means magnetic operate count. It's the magnetic flux density at which a sensor output becomes active. And BRP, the magnetic release pound, is the magnetic flux density at which a sensor output becomes inactive. For unipolar and omnipolar switches, BOP and BRP have the same sign. Unlike the bipolar version, where BOP has the inverse sign of BRP. And all effect sensors is done to detect a close distance of the magnet. The demo board from Allegro that integrates the A1569 and omnipolar all effect sensors with an LED demonstrate the principle. As you can see, if the magnet is close to the chip, the LED turns off. To detect proximity of other materials, other techniques must be used. To detect the conductive material, the inductive sensor is well suited. TI has a large family of inductance to digital converters. The physical phenomenon is the following. The inductance to digital converter uses an inductor in parallel with the capacitor to generate an AC magnetic field. When a conductive target moves nearer to or further from the inductor, the magnetic created by the inductor generates eddy currents on the surface of the target. The eddy currents then create their own magnetic field which opposes the inductor's field. As the target gets closer, the eddy current in density increases, creating a stronger opposing field. We end up with an inductance and a resistance which are functions to the distance between the inductance and the conductive material. Inductive sensors are great for metal detection and for short range and in dirty environments. For detection of humans or other materials, the capacitive detection must be used. A capacitance value depends on permittivity of dielectric, area of plates, and distance between plates. For proximity capacitive sensors, the distance and the area of plates are fixed. But inserting an object close to the capacitance changes the dielectric value. For instance, with the FDC2214 from TI, approaching my hand, the LET is turned on. A capacitive sensors need a few square centimeters of copper. If space constraints exist for the design, optical solutions are a better fit. The cheapest solution is infrared system. The principle is to send an infrared wave to a reflective object and detect the amount of light detected. For instance, the VCNL4020 from Vichy works on this principle. Moving my hand next to the sensors, there is more reflections. The reflections depends on the type of material and this technology is not reliable to measure distance. Let's take a sheet of white paper. The return power is around 12,000 at a small distance. With a grey foam, it is around one-third of this previous power. The time of flight technology allows to measure the distance. The principle is to emit photons to a target and detect the same photons back to the sensor. The VL6180X from ST Microelectronics was designed with this technology. Taking the same white paper and putting it on the Arduino shield, we get a distance of 6 mm. With a grey foam, the measured distance is again 6 mm.